Well, hello and welcome back, 1P. Uh, we're still talking about composite, composite shapes today, um, but instead of finding area, we're finding perimeter. Now, perimeter generally is the easier thing to find for some because you just add up all the sides. Uh, but here, there's no formula for anything. You just have to make sure that you have all of the sides that go around a shape uh, and that you can find all of the sides that go around a shape and um, and add them up. Um, so there's not really one formula for any one of these things. So you really have to pay attention to what you're doing. Um, so our goal today, I can find the distance around a composite shape. So looking at the perimeter, and remember, perimeter is distance around. So perimeter means the distance around. I'm going to highlight that. You really got to remember that. Let's use green. Distance around the outside of any figure. Okay. Any line that is on the edge of a shape needs to be added into the perimeter. Now I want you to note for this first one, the example, the first example we have, there's a dotted line. Now that dotted line is there to show us how this shape is cut up and to give us some measurements in, in certain spots. That dotted line is not part of the perimeter. The perimeter, and I'm going to highlight the perimeter in green, the perimeter are these four sides of the shape. So we're not going to use a formula for the perimeter of a rectangle because I don't have a rectangle. I've got a four-sided shape, but it's not a rectangle. In fact, it's a rhombus, but or it's not a rhombus, a trapezoid. Uh, but we'll get into that kind of thing uh, later. It doesn't really have any bearing on finding the perimeter. Um, so what I need to know is all four of these sides. Now this side is easy. I got this side. This side is 23.4 because they gave me both of these things so I can just add them together so I know that this side is 23.4. Uh, this side is labeled as 12.5 and this side up here, well it's easy too because it is directly across from this side so it's 13.4. Um, that leaves one side to find and we've got a little bit of an issue here because it's a diagonal so it's not equal to anything else on here. Um, but what's really nice is that they've given us this this height in here, which we know is the same as this over there because this is a rectangle. Um, or So it, this here is 12.5 as well, right up here. Now it's not part of the perimeter, but we are going to have to use it to find this because what we have here is a right angle triangle. So to find the third side of the right angle triangle, I have to go back two lessons ago and use the Pythagorean theorem. So this side, which I'm going to call C because it's the hypotenuse, we got this little triangle, this little arrow here, the, the box in the corner pointing the way to the hypotenuse. So there's my hypotenuse. Okay, We're going to call it C and we're going to find that first. So I'm going to say finding the hypotenuse. Finding the hypotenuse. Dot, dot, dot. So we know c squared equals a squared plus b squared because I'm finding the hypotenuse and my a and my b are going to be the 10 and the 12.5 and it doesn't matter which way we do it. So we do 10 squared plus 12.5 squared which is 100 plus 156 0.25 and then we put them together we get 256.25 now remember that is c squared that is the number I would get if I drew a rectangle out here or a square out here and found the area um, that's not what we want we want just the side length so to find that side length I have to take the square root so I'm just going to pull up the calculator here and I get 256.25, I need to take the square root of that. So that's 16.00. So if we round it to one decimal place, it's just 16.0 or 16. So C is 16, which makes this nice. So perimeter, perimeter equals add all sides. Every time you can use that. Okay, uh, And in this case, the sides are, uh, we got to have, it's the green sides there, 16 
plus 13.4 plus 12.5 plus 23.4. Now let's add those all up and I'm going to pull up my calculator to do that too. Uh, 16 plus 13.4 plus 12.5 plus 23.4 and we get 65.3. Now, perimeter is a straight line distance, so that's going to be meters. All right, what's our next shape? Ooh, that looks complicated. Um, okay, so we want to, let's figure out our perimeter here. Uh, I'm going to pick a highlighter again, and I'm going to draw all the way around the shape, because that's the only thing I'm concerned with. Um, here, let's, let's pick a smaller highlighter. I'm only concerned with the edge of the shape. So these are the sides I want, and that dotted line is not something I want, uh, but that dotted line is going to help me figure out um, the uh, this curved line here, uh, because what I have here is a half of a circle, and so I need half of the circumference of a circle, and to know um, the circumference of a circle I have to know either the radius or the diameter. And in this case, I've got an 8 here, so this whole, this dotted line is also 8 because it's right directly across from there. So what are my other sides here? Well, this little mark here and this little mark here mean that both of these are 6. Um, what other purple sides do I need? Um, this purple side, but it's marked the same as that one over there, so it's 3. So I've got 3, 10, 3, 8, 4, 6, 6, and whatever this big loop is. Now this big loop is not 8. 8 is this across here, so I have to find this loop. And it is half of the circumference of a circle. So it's a the outside of a semicircle. So finding this here, and let's let's put let's put um, uh, let's call it x. So finding x. We know that x equals um, the to find the circumference uh, is pi d. But since it's only half the circumference, then I have to split it in two. So it's pi d divided by two. Uh, and since d is 8, we're going to go pi times 8 divided by 2. And I can divide that 8 by 2. I'm going to do that in my head because that's 4. So what I need is 4 pi because I can do that division before I do that multiplication. And that just means that I punch less into the calculator. And if you punch less in, uh, there's fewer mistakes that you're going to make when you're button punching. So I need to do 4 times pi. And we're going to round that to one decimal place, so it's going to be 12.6. I know it says 12.5, but then I look at the next number, and I see that that's a 6, so this gets bumped to a 6. So 12.6. And that's in centimeters. Now I just have to add them all up. So I say total perimeter equals, and we're just going to say add all sides, and what have we got here? Let's start over here at the, let's start from the end of this loop so that we make sure we get them all. 3 plus 10 plus 3, so 3 plus 10 plus 3 plus 8 plus 4 plus 6 plus 6 plus, now my curved part that I found out was 12.6. Now, I'm just going to add these up. Um, I get a 10. I get two threes, so I'm just going to add a 6. I got an 8 and a 4 is 12. I get another 12 with the 6 and the 6. And then I get 12.6 equals 52.6. And that is in centimeters. Okay, what's our next one? Uh, the school athletic director wants to seed the field and replace the fence. So here's the field. There's a fence all the way around it, and we want to put seed on it. How many meters of fence should he buy? 
Well, let's figure out, is fence something that we want area or perimeter on? If we're talking about a fence, we're talking about the distance around. So we want to go around here. There's where we're going to put our fence. So that is perimeter. Now let's have a look at it. If, we, if we're looking at perimeter, basically we've got, got a straight section. Uh, and we've got another straight section down here. And then we've got two half section, two circular sections here. So I got a circular section here and a circular section here. So what I actually have is a circle and two lines that I have to worry about. Now the lines are both 50. The circle has a diameter of 30. So let's find the circle. Let's find the circumference of the circle. And the circumference of the circle is pi d. And d is 30, so this is pi times 30. Now there's no sense dividing it into two. I know these are half circles, but if I take a half circle here and a half circle here, they make a whole circle. So I might as well just leave it as a whole circle. So 30 times pi, 30 times pi, 94.2. And now I have to add in the 250s or 100, right? So perimeter is going to equal um, add all sides. Which is 50 plus 50 plus 94.2. Which equals 194.2. And this is going to be in meters. So they need 194.2 meters of fence. Now, how many square meters of grass seed will he need? Well, what do we need about grass here? Let's take, uh, let's take a green highlighter for grass. Where do we put grass? Do we put grass around the edge of the field? Well, yeah, but we also put it all in here too. Okay. So we need everything. So since we're coloring it in rather than outlining it, we're talking about area in this case. So we need to find the area of the field. Now what have I got as far as area is concerned? Well, I've got the rectangle in the middle and that rectangle is 30 by 50 and then I've got a half circle here and a half circle here which when I put it together make a full circle and it has a radius or a diameter of 30. So to figure out the area, we need the area of the rectangle, and you know that the area of the rectangle is length times width, and that's going to be 30 times 50, which is 1,500, and it's measured in meters, so that's going to be 1,500 square meters. Now the area of a circle, if you look on your formula page, is pi r squared. So that's going to be pi times 30 squared. And 30 squared is 900, so I need 900 times pi. Let's pull up the calculator. 900 times pi equals 2827.4. 2827.4. And now to get the total area, total equals uh, 1500 plus 2827.4. Pull up the calculator again. Uh, let's just add 1500 to that. Um, 4327.4. 4327.4. And that's in square meters. Okay, now let's see what this says. Seed costs 1.45. Do, or, sorry, a dollar forty-five per square meter, and fence costs twenty-three dollars and fifty cents per meter. So, how much will the project cost? So, the cost of seed. The cost of seed is a dollar forty-five for every square meter, and since we have four thousand of them, we're going to have to multiply that by four thousand three hundred twenty-seven point four. So that's a lot of seed. Let's take that. I'm going to clear that out so that we don't have all those digits. 4327.4 times 1.45. 
is 6,274, $6,274.73. That's the cost of seed. So the cost of the fence, remember the fence was the distance around, and we found out that that was 194.2. 194.2. Point two meters, but each one of those meters is going to cost me $23. So I have to multiply that by $23.50. So let's pull out our calculator again. 194.2 times 23.50 equals $4,563.70. Forty-five, sixty-three, and seventy cents. So the total cost. The total cost is those two things added together. So it looks like ten thousand dollars, ten thousand eight hundred thirty-eight dollars and forty-three cents is the total cost, and we should have a concluding statement to that effect. So therefore. It will cost $10,838.43 for the project. And that completes this lesson.